Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In this video, I'm going to be discussing one of the Deathly Hallows. In fact, I'm going to be discussing what is arguably the most important of the Hallows, at least in terms of the Harry Potter story. I am of course talking about the Elder Wand. The Elder Wand is undeniably the most powerful wand in the Harry Potter universe. It was the first Hallow created, made by Death himself, and no other wand is its equal. The Elder Wand is made of Elder Wood, and its core is the tail hair of a Thestral. It's 15 inches long and has carvings down its length that resemble clusters of elderberries. With the Elder Wand, witches and wizards are able to effortlessly produce intensely powerful magic that others could only dream of. Possession of the wand also meant that you could produce magic which was not otherwise possible, including things like mending other wands, something that could not normally be achieved through magic. The Elder Wand, being one of the Deathly Hallows, is commonly associated with the tale of three brothers, Antioch, Cadmus, and Ignotus. The brothers were all members of the famous Peveril family. The plot surrounds the three wizard brothers and their ability to cheat death for a short period of time. After conquering death, a personification of death, under the guise of congratulating them, told each of the brothers that he would award them with the gift of their choosing. The eldest brother, a combative man, asked for a wand more powerful than any in existence. Death granted his wish by fashioning the Elder Wand from a branch of a nearby elder tree standing on the banks of the river. The second brother, an arrogant man, chose to further humiliate Death and asked for the power to recall the deceased from the grave. Death granted his wish by crafting the resurrection stone from a stone picked from the river bank. The third and youngest brother, who was the most humble and wise, did not trust Death and asked for something to enable him to go forth without death being able to follow. A reluctant death, most unwillingly, handed over a part of his own invisibility cloak. The three brothers took their prizes, and soon went on their separate ways. And that was how the Deathly Hallows were born. However, this was not the last time that death and the three brothers would meet. Each brother, under their own unique circumstances, ended up losing their life and met death once more. The eldest brother travelled to a village, where a wizard whom he had quarrelled lived. He sought out a duel and fought the wizard using the wand, instantly killing the latter. Leaving his enemy dead upon the floor, the eldest brother walked to an inn not far from the dueling site and spent the night there. Taken by his conscience and lust of the Elder Wand's power, the eldest brother boasted of this wand, gifted by death and his own invincibility. That very night, death transfigured to a murderous wizard. The unknown murderous wizard crept to the inn as the eldest brother slept, drunk from wine. The wizard slit the oldest brother's throat for good measure and stole the wand. That was when death took the first brother. So the oldest brother Antioch died, and death, assuming the form of a murderous wizard, stole the wand back. We know that Dumbledore later becomes owner of the Elder Wand, as it plays an integral part in the Harry Potter story. However, what I want to do in this video is fill in the gaps and discuss who owned the Elder Wand before Dumbledore. Throughout history, who were the owners of the Elder Wand? Let's get started. So, Antioch was the first owner, but one thing that I thought was worth mentioning is that Albus Dumbledore never believed that the wand was actually made by death. Dumbledore always assumed that the wand was in fact created by the eldest of the Peveril brothers, Antioch himself. However, regardless of who created the fabled wand, the fact remains. Antioch was killed, and the wand no longer belonged to him. So, where did the wand go next? According to Xenophilia's Lovegood, the bloody trail of the Elder Wand was splattered across the pages of wizarding history. After Antioch died, the wand was passed around from wizard to wizard, usually by violent means, which led to the wand acquiring a few different names, the Death Stick and the Wand of Destiny, an omen of death that alludes to the bloody trail mentioned by Lovegood. The first official known historical owner of the Elder Wand is a wizard who went by the name Emmerich the Evil. Though the wand may have been in the hands of other wizards before Emmerich and after Antioch, Emmerich is the first wizard on record to have possessed it. Emmerich has been described as a short-lived but exceptionally aggressive wizard that terrorized the south of England in the early Middle Ages. It has been expressed that Emmerich eventually died after losing a duel to a rival wizard, Egbert the Egregious. Egbert the Egregious of course became the new master of the Elder Wand after defeating and killing Emmerich the Evil, its previous owner, in a duel. Besting the previous owner in some way is thought to be how the wand is passed on, and where previously it was thought that murder was necessary, this was later disproved, as in some cases, disarming the current owner is enough. No one knows what happened to Egbert after defeating Emmerich, or how long he possessed the wand for. However, the next known owner of the wand came about a century later. 
The next known owner of the Elder Wand was a wizard by the name of Godelo. If this name sounds familiar to you, it may be because Godelo wrote the famous dark magic textbook Magique Most Evil, a book containing information on dark magic, including a passing reference to Horcruxes in its introduction. Godelo used the Elder Wand to push the boundaries of magic and considered it to be his teacher, allowing the wand to help him write the book. Godelo was killed by his own son, who locked him in the cellar in order to gain ownership of the wand. The next owner was a wizard by the name of Herowood, who was of course Godelo's son. Little is known about Herowood, but we do know that he ultimately lost possession of the wand as it went on to a new owner. The next known master of the Elder Wand was a wizard by the name of Barnabas Deverell. In the early 18th century, utilizing the wand, Deverell earned quite the reputation as a fearsome warlock. Deverell certainly didn't use the wand for good, and eventually his reign of terror ended when he was defeated by a rival wizard. The next known owner of the Elder Wand, the wizard who defeated Barnabas, was a man by the name of Loxius. Loxius is the man who famously gave the Elder Wand the name the Death Stick, and ruthlessly murdered many people utilizing the wand. Loxius was a truly evil dark wizard that many wanted dead, and according to Dumbledore, many claimed to have been the one to finish him off, even his own mother. Because no one knew who killed him, this point in history is a bit blurry with regards to who became the next owner of the wand. However, from Xenophilius Lovegood's understanding of history, he believed that it was one of two wizards, Arcus or Oblivious, two wizards that we don't know very much about. After this point in history, things are a bit blurry, and the next known owner of the wand was one shop owner, B.Q. Kogorovich, who you've probably heard of before. This is the point at which the history of the wand enters familiar territory, as after Miku gained the wand's possession, he bragged about it in order to promote his shop. The wand was then subsequently stolen by none other than Gellert Grindelwald, a man you've probably heard of before. Grindelwald held the Elder Wand for many years and used it to tyrannize the wizarding world. However, when he was eventually defeated in 1945 by Albus Dumbledore, Dumbledore became the wand's new owner, and he held on to it for quite some time. The next owner of the wand was Draco Malfoy, who, during the Battle of the Astronomy Tower, disarmed Dumbledore. No one knew that he had become the one's rightful owner at that point, particularly as Snape was the one to end Dumbledore's life. Everyone previously thought that defeat was necessary for the one to change hands. However, nonetheless, Draco Malfoy was the one's new owner, through disarming alone. Our very own Harry Potter becomes the next and the final owner of the Elder Wand, almost a year after Draco becomes its owner, when he takes Draco's wand by force during the skirmish at the Malfoy Manor. Shortly after Harry becomes the one's new owner, however, he puts an end to the bloody trail of the Elder Wand. I'm putting the Elder Wand back where it came from. It can stay there. If I die a natural death like Ignotus, its power will be broken, won't it? The previous master will never have been defeated. That'll be the end of it. And that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live.